Hey you guys! For today's video, I am going to be reading some of my old, depressing, suicidal, cringy poetry. Um, this poetry I wrote anywhere from six to two years ago. I haven't really made any new po poems in the past, like, two years. But, um, in front of me, I have 13 poems that I wrote. And that's not even all of them. I have, like, 10 more in the floor that are just too cringy to read and share with you guys. But I have 13 here that I'm going to be reading if I have enough time. Some of them are super short and some of them are, like, three paragraphs long. So I'm going to be reading those, but before that, I'm going to share a little story about my life. Um, it's extremely personal, and not many people know, like only my family and some close friends know this story, but since I'm going to be reading all of my poetry, which is all about depression and suicide, um, I have to share why my poems are like this, and it's because during those years, I was nothing but depressed. I was nothing but confused. I was suicidal. I was lonely. I was... Everything about my life back then was just, like, dark and depressing, and I was just so, I don't, I don't even know the word for it. It was just, I had a very pathetic life at the time, but, like, I have learned so much from those experiences, and today, I'm happy. I'm healthy, I'm actually eating, I'm not cutting myself anymore, I don't have suicidal thoughts every single day like I used to, I'm so much better, and I'm so, so happy that I am still here, and I'm so happy that I chose to live, and that's that what I just said is the most important thing I've ever thought about myself is that I'm so fucking happy that I didn't kill myself. I'm so happy that I'm here. I'm so fucking happy to be alive. And I hope you are too. So, back in like seventh grade, I started being bullied for the very first time, and the reason I was bullied, I shouldn't have even been bullied. Some kid came up with a rumor, and it spread throughout the entire grade, and I was being bullied, and it came to the point where I was just being bullied every single day for no good reason. I was just minding my own business and I had paper balls thrown at me. I had kids telling me to go drink bleach, to go slit my wrist open, to go slit my throat. Suicidal uh, threats telling me to just go fuck myself, go kill myself. And um, this lasted all the way until, like, my 10th grade, uh, in high school. Um, so this bullying and depression lasted for about four or five years. And in that four or five years of me being depressed, about three years ago, I attempted suicide. I... It was a Friday at school, and I saw something, and I heard something that was relating to me, 
and as soon as I got in my car, I had my whole weekend planned out. Friday night, I did nothing. I planned out what I was going to do to kill myself or what I was going to do before I killed myself. Saturday night, I took everything I owned. I took my paintings. I took my books. I took my clothes, my shoes, my jewelry, my little knickknacks, all of my personal stuff that I loved. I took it outside to the burn pile and I burned everything of mine. I got rid of everything. My money I wrote a note, a suicide note, saying that all of my money goes to either my sister or my grandmother. I have a um, phone card that I get every month. That was going to go to my sister. Some of my collectibles were going to go to friends and family. Uh, my flat screen TV was going to go to my sister. I had certain things that I couldn't burn, like a TV. So, certain things I was just going to give to family and friends. So, Saturday night, I destroyed, I burned everything. And my parents were like, Shannon, what the fuck are you doing? You just started a fire in the backyard, in the burn pit, and you're burning your clothes, your brand new clothes. You're burning a jewelry that we gave you for Christmas. What what the fuck are you doing? And I told them that they'll finally understand what I'm doing Monday morning when they find me dead. But, um, I burnt everything. I even had, like, a gram of weed left over, and I threw that in the fire, which I wish I hadn't had done. Because nowadays, I'm a, I'm the type of person I don't waste weed at all. Even if it's a tiny little crumb, I smoke it. I'm not going to throw away weed or, or whatever. But, um, Saturday, I burned everything, got rid of all of my belongings. Sunday night, at midnight, I was planning on taking my life. And Monday morning... When I was supposed to get up for school, I was hoping that my parents, grandparents, or sister would find my body laying in this bed dead. But, um, on Sunday night, right before I was going to take my life, I talked to a friend about my suicide attempt plans and they saved me, and they told me, you need to get help. You don't need to kill yourself for whatever reason. You need to get help. You need to get mental help, and you need to, you need, you need, you need help. And so I, I got help. I did not kill myself, which I am so thankful for that friend who saved me, who saved my life. And, um, I, uh, I went to a psychiatrist and I, I put myself into a psychiatric mental hospital for a week and a half and I got the help I need and I met some really amazing people. I made some friends there. I made some artwork. I wrote some happy poems. I also wrote some depressing poems about how I was feeling at the time. And then, um, this here. This is the, um, the little bracelet thingy they gave me, um, at the hospital and also at the, um, psychiatric hospital. I was 15 at the time. And I'm 20 now, so this was, I guess it was four and a half years ago, not three. Yeah, it was four and a half years ago when all of this happened. It was, the date on here is 11-18-14, 
which was when I checked into the mental hospital to get the help that I desperately needed, but it was, um, 11, 15, 14, which was the day I was supposed to die, which, what, that was the day I was going to kill myself, but I'm so glad I didn't, because if I had killed myself, I wouldn't have had the chance to turn 16. I wouldn't have had the chance to get my driver's license or to to go to school and graduate and to apply for college, to get my first car, to get my first job, to make a YouTube channel, to meet my current boyfriend. I wouldn't have had the opportunity to do anything if I had taken my life that day. I wanted to share that story before I read my poems. So, thank you for listening. If you're here still, hopefully you haven't clicked off yet. I don't know where to start with this. There's a lot. I think I'm going to start with this one. This is a newer one from like two years ago. It's called Striving. I need to experience something, something new, something completely different than my current experiences. I need to experience something that will change my life forever, something that will change my ways of thinking. I need to take a trip to an unfamiliar world. I need to balance my perspectives, my perspectives on life, religion, love. I am striving to become the person I want to be and to be the person that I want others to see me as. I am striving for balance. I am striving for stability. I am striving for harmony. I am striving for peace. I am striving for self-love. I am striving for only positive results. I am stri striving for a positive me. Striving. Next. Love-hate relationship. This one is, um, this one striving, the, when I wrote this poem, I was, I, it's not very depressing, but I was talking about how I really wanted to trip on acid, and how I wanted to try to find myself through an acid trip. So that one's I, I, I even drew, like, little mushrooms on it. That one is, like, it's not really depressing. It's all about, like, me wanting to do acid and try to, like, figure a life out through that trip. Love-hate relationship. I hate being here. I hate my heart beating. I hate my blood flowing. I hate living and I hate breathing. All I want to do is get the fuck off this earth. I hate it. I hate the people on it. I hate everything about it. Except, I love the weeping willow trees. I love the heavenly sunsets in the evenings. I love the cool wind blowing through my hair on a hot summer day. I love nature and I love earth, but I just hate what has become of it. Love-hate relationship. Some of these have a date on it from when I, uh, wrote it, but 
some of them also don't, so I have no clue when. I, I remember writing it, but I don't know exactly when it was. This one is called Running. Bleeding. Bleeding on the inside and outside. Every drop pouring out. Ever since that day, it's been nothing but misery. The pain I feel is unbearable. So unloved and unwanted. My brightest colors have turned to black and gray. Depression is overflowing my human body. These thoughts, the ones roaming in my mind, so sickening and suicidal, I know all others look down upon me. Do they not realize that I'm trying to change? I'm trying to turn from the dark, evil, twisted thoughts. I cannot seem to escape this hell. I hate myself for my past mistakes. I try to run away from the thoughts and the failure. But it seems as though I trip and fall, and all of the past catches up with me. Running. Some of these I just wrote on plain paper, but some of them I wrote on plain paper and then tweaked it and corrected it and printed it off on just plain white paper. This one is called, uh, Nothing But Dust. We are living our lives. We are breathing oxygen into our lungs. There is blood pumping through our veins. Our hearts are beating. We can see our loved ones. We can see the scenic routes we take. We can hear. We can hear our favorite songs. We can speak what's on our minds. We can smell every scent, the scent of a new candle. We can taste our lover's lips. But have we come to the realization that all these unnoticeable pleasures will end. One day, we'll be lying in a casket, the one our loved one picked out, our permanent bed. Not a breath of oxygen left to inhale or exhale. The blood has stopped pumping, our hearts no longer beating. Our eyes stitched shut, only old gospels playing, and the sound of crying. No more words spoken, only the smell of roses. Nothing but a dry mouth. Right now, we are everything, but one day, we'll be nothing, nothing but dust. Nothing but dust. And that's honestly so true. We, living life, we're, we, we have all these senses and we can see pretty sunsets and we're, we can be happy and we can, we can feel love and, you know, all of these pleasures one day are going to completely end and we are going to be nothing but bones and nothing but dust. And people don't realize that. They just take life for granted. <coughs> this one is called Invisible Me. They don't see me. They don't hear me. I'm completely invisible in this small, torturous world. I could just disappear and they wouldn't care at all. They wouldn't even notice. They don't notice all the tears that I shed. 
they don't notice all these thin white slits on my wrist and thighs. Even if they did notice my pain, it would slip right out of their thoughts while they move along to something better. I wish I weren't here. Why am I here anyway? I'm worthless. I'm no use to anyone. Everything would be better off if I could just slowly fade away. Fade away into the nothing that I already am. Invisible me. Um, this, this one actually has a date on it. It is from uh, September 26th of 2014. That was so long ago. This one is called Numbing the Pain. They don't know the real me. They have no idea about the thoughts inside my head. The suicidal ones. Taking the sharp pointed blade and cutting through my worthless skin. Bleeding until I can't bleed anymore. I hide behind closed doors. Protecting myself from the cruel outside world. I can't seem to get rid of them. How can I numb the pain? A few pills? A cut or two? A burn here or there? I have to hide it so I won't be judged. I'm not sure about my thoughts at times. I'm not sure about death. Should I die painlessly and peacefully? No. I sometimes think that I should die a horrific death. Perhaps this is the last word I speak. That one, it's fucking deep. And it's fucking depressing. And I can't believe I wrote some of these. Some of these are like super cringy. Like some of them, like the first half of it is like, okay, it's like really good poetry. Really good depressing poetry. But then you get to the end and it's like, what the fuck? That's so cringy and pathetic. And some of these, I I honestly, some of these I need to, like, go back and, like, tweak them and correct them a little bit. But anyway, next. <coughs> um, this one is called HIM, capital H-I-M. And it is from September 29th of 2014. I feel... Completely and entirely alone. Sometimes I even feel dead. Like I'm not even really here. Like I don't truly exist. But as soon as I see him, those feelings and thoughts immediately fade away. My heart starts beating again. My blood starts rushing through my veins again, and I finally feel alive again. When I see him, I see absolute perfection. I love every little detail about him. I love him. I just wish that he felt that way about me. He makes me so happy. He can put a smile on my face. When I feel hatred for myself. He can stop the tears. When I feel like crying. He can make me feel beautiful. When I feel ugly. He can make me feel loved. When I don't love myself. He's the only one. But I know he'll never be mine. Him. Um. This was... From so long ago, and I'm pretty sure I know what guy I'm talking about, and um, I haven't spoken to him in like two or three years, but I was so fucking in love with him. God, I had such a cringy love for him. <clears throat> this one, pretty long. 
<clears throat> um, it's called If It Makes You Happy. And I'm I'm pretty sure this this poem is also about him. When you walk towards me, I don't see you. I see absolute perfection. Your eyes, your beautiful smile, even your voice, everything. I want those things to be things I could wake up to in the mornings. That I could see before I shut my eyes and when I open them. You're always the first and last thing I think of in the day. I want to feel your heartbeat. If you could only hear mine when I'm near you, it would bust your eardrum. When I'm near you, I can never think of the right thing to say. I can't concentrate because everything seems to happen in a matter of seconds. Even if we spent hours together, those hours would go by way too fast for me. I hate those hours. I wish they could be days. Spending days listening to your voice ring in my ears. Only in my dreams. I've never dreamt of you before. But every night before I finally fall asleep, I think of what it would be like to be yours. How it would feel to be wrapped warmly in your arms. How it would taste to press my lips against yours. But then again, I can only think of how it would feel or taste. I'll never actually know. I know now that how I think of you, you'll never think of me. You think I'm some young girl who has crazy ideas in her head. Maybe I am. But that doesn't change a thing. I know what love is. Love is when you care so deeply for someone that you would do almost anything to make sure they're happy. I want you to be happy. And even if taking me out of your life could do that, then I guess I would do just that. If you were taken away as a part of my life, what would I do? I would be depressed. I would shed many tears. It would take the rest of my life and half of another to finally stop the pain I would be in. You've made a home in my heart, and maybe in my wrist, too. My wrist is the river that would take you away from me. That poem, I know, is about that same guy, and I, I read over these before I started this video, and that one is so cringy. It's so fucking cringy. This one is called Love is Suicidal, and it is from April 24th of 2014. I need you right now more than ever. I don't want to wait for you. I can't. I can't sit around and wait forever for someone to finally love me. Come here right now. If I wait for your love any longer, it'll be too late. I'll do whatever it takes to be called yours and you mine. Come to me silently and surely. Please don't forget to bring your love. I can't live without it. I can't live without you. You are my everything. My soul, my mind, my heart, every breath I take is made by your love. It, keep, it keeps me alive. Without your presence, I'm dead. Another very cringy uh, love poem. Okay. This one, um, 
super depressing. I actually really, really love this one. And, um... It's kind of cringy that I put a razor blade picture at the bottom, but whatever. <clears throat> this one is called Something That I Can Call Mine. I desperately want something that I can call mine. Something or someone that I can love and cherish with every ounce of my heart. Something or someone who can wipe away the tears in my eyes. Someone special. Someone who can take away my pain. Someone who can fight away all of my fears. Someone who I can live my dream with. A dream taking place in a beautiful grassy valley where we cannot be disturbed and, and only have each other to hold. I imagine in my dream of being in a long, flowy, white dress and being close to the one I love, laying down in a grassy, flowering valley, staring into each other's eyes, wishing this could last forever. And then suddenly, I wake up from this beautiful nightmare, realizing that this dream is too good to be true, mostly for a girl like me. No one wants to love someone who has ugly scars on their wrist. No one wants to love someone who has tried oh so many times to disappear. <clears throat> and then at the bottom, I signed it, that girl who has tried oh so many times to dot 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 to disappear. Okay. This one I also really like, and I named it Foggy Haze. For a very long time now, I have been confused, wandering aimlessly in a very thick fog. I need to disappear for a short period of time to truly think about my life and to clear my mind. I need to make it through this fog, and blossom into, no into another being and mindset. That one is super short, and I honestly, I don't think I'm finished with it. I think I need to add more at the end, or maybe in the middle, but it's, it's not finished. Another very long one. This is the longest video I've ever made. And all I'm doing is reading. Whatever. I hope you're still here. And I hope you are 